Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's having a good day today. Thanks for tuning back into the video. Much appreciated. And today I'm going to do a, uh, a video I've been wanting to do a long time. I get, I get a lot of comments, a lot of questions on it as far as fishing professionally for a living. Um, and I, I just want to basically preface this video and tell you, I'm just going to be upfront and honest with you guys. I'm going to tell you why I think choosing professional bass fishing as a career is a terrible move for most people and I say most people I'm not saying all people but I'm gonna sort of go into detail about why I feel like that and I, you probably never heard a lot of people say why it's a bad idea you hear a lot of people give you advice on how to become a professional angler which I can do the same thing but um, I'm telling I'm gonna come from this at an angle from I've been in the dirt the trenches guys I've been fishing full-time professionally for a living since 1985 you know there's a handful of us that have been around that long not very many people so I think I'm extremely qualified to tell you you know the reality behind it and why that I am saying that it's not a good career choice for everybody and then at the end of this video I'm gonna preface a little bit and say and tell you why maybe it might be a decent career choice for some people First of all, you know, I get the, one of the biggest comments that I get all the time. I've gotten it from, you know, even before social media, got it since social media. The biggest thing that I hear about it when, pe when people find out I'm pro a pro fisherman, they say, well, that must be nice. And, <laughs> you know, I just want to say, man, you guys got no clue on what that even means. Because on the surface, yeah, it seems nice. You get to go around the country, you get a fish for a living, you get a fish, you get to do what you love to do. You know, that's part of it. And I will say one thing about pro fishing, you know, if, if you love to fish and you love competition um, and you get to do that for a living, yeah, it can be awesome. But there's that's one minute part of it. There's so much other stuff that goes along with it. So I'm gonna break it down a little bit. I'm gonna tell you guys why it's a bad idea to consider pro fishing as a career. First of all, and I'm, I'm going to address the big one right off the bat, the financial part of it. Bass fishing tournaments are money pits. Um, I've had some years where I've won $250,000 fishing, and I've had some years where I didn't win anything. It's And when I say it's a money pit, you've got potential for a big windfall profit, but you also have potential for financially devastating years. You know, it's all over the place. It's up and down. There's no guarantee. And for most people, and it seems like the trend's changing a little bit because now it seems like the last four or five years, you, you've seen an influx of independently wealthy people becoming professional anglers. You see a bunch of 20-year-old kids that drive $70,000 trucks and brand new boats and pay $50,000 a year for, entry, for an entry fees, which there's no way a 20-year-old kid can do that on their own. So you've had... A lot of people that have gotten into the sport that have a lot of family money and that's one of the few ways that you can get in it now but for most people like myself starting out and for most guys it's like the biggest hurdle that you have to overcome and the biggest stressor and why it's not worth it is simply the financial pressure that you have on it let me give you the reality if you guys want to fish the tour level on the pro circuits you're talking about spending anywhere between forty to fifty thousand dollars a year um, on entry fees. You're talking about spending, you know, twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year on tournament-related expenses. You're talking about f f spending whatever you have to spend on your boat and truck payment that goes along with that, which can be, you know, ten to twenty thousand dollars. You're talking about tackle that goes with it, insurance that goes with your truck and boat all that type of stuff and that's just before you even make a cast so you're into this thing if you on the tour level you're into this thing for well over a hundred thousand dollars right off the bat and that's not paying any of your home expenses you know everybody's got mortgage everybody's got food to buy bills to pay you know lots and lots of expenses especially if you have a family so in order basically just to fish professionally, you have to be loaded. You've either got to be loaded or you have to have a super solid sponsor base and some type of additional way to generate money, which, um, you know, for a lot of people, it doesn't come like that. What it does come with is if you're not one of those people that are financially wealthy, independent, have a lot of fun, you know, 
family money, have a lot of discretionary income just to throw at it, you're gonna be under a constant strain financially, mentally, and r realistically. And I'm telling you guys right now, I can tell you from experience, the, the, the stress levels and the, uh, you know, just the negativity that comes with constantly, year after year after year, worrying about paying bills, if you're gonna be able to fit, afford to fish next year, that is something right there that will drain you down in a hurry. And I'm gonna say that that's right off the bat, that's one of the most, that can be the most, I'm not saying it's the most intense thing for everybody because again, for whatever reason, it seems like there's a lot more people that have money in the sport now back than they did 20 years ago. But for a lot of the people out there, that's gonna be a stress that is perpetually on you that just doesn't go away. And on the top of that, you know, with professional fishing, there's no, there's no security. I mean, a lot of the people out there that say to me, it's like, oh, it must be nice to fish for a living. I just want to come back and say, well, it must be nice to get a regular paycheck every week because how would you like to work for, you know, 60 hours, 60, 70 hours for the week, daylight till dark, and then pay to go to work and then not get paid for that? And that's what happens in pro fishing a lot is you work your butt off and spend a ton of money and don't get anything from it. And, and that's another thing. There's no pensions in pro fishing. There's no retirements in pro fishing. Um, there's a lot of financial stressors that go with it. Second thing is the traveling that goes with it. The traveling part of it absolutely sucks, in my opinion. And that's one of the things as you do it longer, I've been doing it for 35 years, and that's the biggest thing that I dread about it is traveling and being away from home. You know, just the thousands of miles on the interstate highways, dealing with traffic, dealing with going through major cities, you know, dealing with road construction everywhere, uh, going to strange hotels, you know, the, you know, sketchy areas through town, you know, and having to deal with just being away from home. I mean, that to me is one of the, the, one of the most unattractive things about it, as far as, you know, just the traveling that goes with it. Third thing I'll talk about with it is relationship issues. Professional fishing is difficult on relationships. So it's another big reason you shouldn't consider it as a sport. It's not only difficult if you if you have a girlfriend or a wife. There's a lot of issues that go with that that make it make put a strain on a relationship. It's difficult, super difficult, if you have kids to be away from home. And what happens is there's a handful of people out there that travel with their families, travel with their wives. Not many of them, but there are some that, that do that. But what happens then is if you have a family and a spouse that travels with you, then their identity becomes wrapped up into pro fishing. And a lot of times they lose their own identity supporting their spouse, which is not a positive thing either. So, you know, it's gonna be very difficult, not only on, you know, your relationship, if you're married, have a girlfriend, whatever, but just your extended family, your your parents, you know, all your good friends back home, you're always gone. That's a, that's a, a big part about it. Um, other things that go with that as far as, you know, just, you know, this is tied in a little bit to the financial part of it, is just maintaining a sponsor base. If you, in order, like I said, unless you're one of those people out there that have a family that's loaded or something like that, you simply cannot survive professionally fishing without super solid sponsors and you're constantly under pressure to perform whether it be on the water or through promotional or social media like that you're constantly under pressure you know to perform for those sponsors there's no guarantee the sponsors are going to be there next year um, you're basically a lot of times a phone call away from losing your title sponsor you know most of us have been through that I mean we've all been through that you know the stress that comes with constantly maintaining the sponsorship. And that's the whole thing about it. If you get, say you get a deal lined out with a good sponsor and everything, and you've got, you're rolling along two or three years, and all of a sudden the marketing department changes heads, you get a new person in there, they make a shift in direction they wanna go with, and you can be out on the curb just as a, as a byproduct, you know, just as a casualty of that change in management. So that's constantly on your mind. So those factors all together, you know, the being away from home, you know, financial stresses, stresses, stressors on a relationship, you know, all that type of stuff together is a huge reason 
in my opinion, why you shouldn't do it. Another thing about it, which has a big part of it, is if you do this long enough, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, you're gonna experience more failures than you are um, uh, successes in the sport, there's no doubt. And what happens is you spend so much time working and you work so hard, and like for me, you have such a desire to do well in the tournaments, is when you don't do well in the tournaments, it's extremely frustrating to you because bass fishing is not like other sports. Any other occupation out there, you're directly rewarded and compensated in relative terms to how hard you work and how well you produce. In bass fishing, guys, that's not true. It doesn't matter how hard you work. You can be, you can work 23 hours a day harder than anybody out there and still not be successful. There's no guarantees for success. Tournament bass fishing to a large degree is gambling. Yeah, you've got the, uh, the top 1% guys out there that make money in most every tournament they go to, but the reality is for most people, that's not the case. You're gonna fail more than you're gonna, than you're gonna succeed. So those reasons right there, I think that if you're considering wanting to be a professional angler, you should strongly consider what I'm talking there. I'm telling you guys out of my own, you know, hard earned, uh, you know, experience on there that is simply for most people, it is a very poor career choice. It really is. Now, that being said, I wanna leave it with something else. I wanna leave it with, some, with, uh, with a, an opposite note to give you guys something to think about there. For some people, it's the only way to go. Like for me, when I started out, that's all I wanted to do. I was ate up with it. I lived it, I breathed it day and night, and that's all I wanted to do. And if you're in a situation where you're single, you know, you don't have a lot of responsibilities, you're ate up with fishing, you can't live without it, you don't have any other interests besides that, you don't have a lot of financial responsibilities, um, you don't mind traveling across the country and, and you, you enjoy driving, all that type of stuff. If your life is positioned like that, then, and you have that passion that you can't live without it, then yeah, it can be awesome. It can be a great way. And I've had, I've had periods in my career where everything lined up. I had everything, all my ducks in a row, and it was the best feeling in the world, especially when you're doing good in the tournaments no other feeling like it and there's nothing I ever would ever want to do different in there and I've had enough of those periods in my career that I've had more of those periods than not that kept me in it that kept my passion and my love for the sport in it because I love fishing bass tournaments don't get me wrong I love fishing bass tournaments there's there's nothing in my opinion that makes me feel more alive as a person when I'm in a tournament and I'm in the hunt to win the tournament or I'm in the hunt to make a top 10 and I'm on them and I'm doing good in the tournament, there's not a, another feeling out there like that. And if you're one of those guys that just live for that and you and you are addicted to that feeling, then you might want to consider this as a career. But if you've got any of the things that I talked about, if you've got financial stressors, if, you're, if you feel that it's gonna put your relationships with your family and your friends in jeopardy, if you don't like being away from home and don't like to travel, guys just give it up and just fish locally don't consider fishing for a living full-time because um i can tell you it's not going to be you know what it seems to be and what happens for a lot of guys you know like myself i've been doing it for so long i don't know anything else i mean i i live you know for you know over half of my life or yeah well over half of my life and i'm almost 60 years old now i've been a professional bass angler so it's just sort of ingrained in my dna you know, to be part of fishing like that. And uh, some guys are like that, but I hear all the time guys ask me, you know, what I need to do to be a pro, what I need to do to be a sponsor. And I would just, you know, unless you're just a fanatic and you're ate up with it and you don't really care about anything else in life but fishing and you don't have any relationships that are pressing, don't do it. Just, you know, figure out something else that you'd rather do because it, it'll save you a lot of, uh, uh, heartache and uh, save you a lot of money too in the long term so anyway guys that's just a few thoughts i wanted to share that with you guys i uh, hope i didn't uh, you know burst anybody's bubble that wants to be a pro fisherman that's not what the intention of this video was i just wanted to lay out the real world to you on it and that's sort of the way it is so anyway thanks for tuning in we'll check with you guys later on see you.